in this case, what I've done is I've taken uh, bleach, regular Clorox, um, that you use to wash your clothes. And uh, what I did was I poured a little bit in my palette, and I'm using that as my medium to paint. I use a very cheap brush. Um, you should get something that's an, either an old brush of yours or uh, get something that's a bristle brush like this, and then use that on a piece of dark Canson paper. So this is Canson paper in blue. And all I do after that is I take my brush and I start to create um, my pattern with it, just doing a flower. And you can see as I paint with the bleach, it starts to eat away at the, at the paper. Now, if you really want to do this uh, perfect and wonderful and so on, you could go and use different strengths of bleach. So in other words, you could use like three quarters bleach and one quarter water or 50-50, 50% -50, um, bleach and 50% um, water. And then you would see that um, the values of what's being eaten away is less because you've diluted the bleach um, with water, okay? And that you'll start seeing that it'll start taking form little by little as it keeps eating away at the, um, at the paper, okay? Another thing that you have in your house that you could do for uh, techniques would be using just um, regular gouache, using regular gouache on your, um, as your design medium that you've always used, and then uh, taking and using um, Q-tips. Drop this out of there. So using Q-tips. So let's say, for example, you could take your Q-tip and use the tip of it with just regular gouache and do a pointillism design on your paper. I'm just making sure that you could see that, yep. Um, you could do a pointillism design using just your gouache on paper. And of course you have two sides, so you might want to work with the other side as well. And start, you can see how it builds on it. Um, I'm sitting here also with the with the dye with the um, bleach there, and I would recommend for you to be careful because it's very strong. So you need a place where there's ventilation. So I would highly recommend for you to um, to make sure the window is open when you're using that, or wear a mask so that you protect yourself against the fumes of the um, of the bleach. And this thing again, so like I'm using my <clears throat> dots to form my flower and um, you could see that of course I'm just doing a very quick flower just for the demonstration part of it but this would be the technique just using the q-tips to get this dot now I'm doing this very with um, with no control whatsoever I'm just plopping down dots all over the place you may want to do something that has a little bit more control than I have and uh, that would be good so you would just need to really take your time doing it. And of course you'll come up with your own ideas, your own designs and everything to use the, the dots as your medium, okay? You might also want to do several different uh, layers of that as well. Another thing that you might want to consider too is going to your local craft store and buying uh, a stamp already made, which um, this is. And basically, um, you could use this to start off as a technique for like a background. So let's say, for example, you wanted to do this. I'm going to use the, um, let me see if I get the black out because it was really watery before. But you need to take the paint and put it onto your, your, um, your stamp. Or if you really wanted to, you could also put some of this in a, um, a plastic or paper plate and then dip the... Um, stamp onto the plate and you could get what you need uh, to make the stamp on here because this does take time. Also I would recommend for you even when you're using this you're going to get things that are uneven and that's exactly it. You're looking you're not looking for total perfection you're looking for um, something that is a little bit not so hand-drawn um, and you could basically create a textile design uh, quickly. And that's the whole process part of this. So once you get all, everything in there, hopefully cover it up. 
You could use that as your stamp. Now, you might want to do this perfectly aligned, which there's ways of doing that. I'm just going to put it here because I just want to show the difference when the paint is totally gone. All right. And you could just keep placing this all over the place. It's starting to look a little bit like a, a Japanese uh, stencil with those techniques there. And move this a little bit more if you could see it. There we go. And I'm going to do this again, putting this on my stamp. Putting it down here. And keep stamping that and finding that. Once you get finished with it, you could come back and do whatever you want. I mean, you might want to do something that cuts across it. Maybe do, um, you know, leaves on top of here. Give it sort of an Asian feel to it. And it'll start to build on itself as you continue to, um, to create. Okay? So it doesn't have to be all just one way. Okay? That would be something that you might want to consider. Then also there is, this is sort of begun already, but this is a piece of corrugated um, paper. I don't know if you could see it. They sell this corrugated paper. You could also use a piece of corrugated paper from, um, from the shipping places. Um, you know, I'm sure that they have something like this that you could use. So this is just very simple. Uh, if you could use different um, colors to paint your design, but with the corrugated paper, what you would be doing is basically <clears throat> you would be using your regular gouache and then lightly going, you could do one of two things. You could either go very, you can put it right on here. You could lightly go on top of the, of the, of the corrugated paper and it gives it kind of a very um, ecot sort of look. You go through it very lightly. And you could layer colors on top of color, which I think makes it very interesting. And you can get a very sort of ecot look without having to do all the line work and so on. You could see already how that starts to build on the, um, the design. And you could just create a whole design basically doing this. It would be beautiful. I mean, a whole collection based on this gives it really a sort of um, vintagey feel to it, almost uh, Asian or Moroccan. Also, did a very um, ecot look like this. So you might want to try that. Okay.